The design of this course, actually, we will use it in many ways. Maybe through pictures, maybe through sounds, maybe through events, or maybe through videos. These are guides to stimulate students' creativity so that they can develop what we want them to develop. The lesson that day, actually, at first I hope to get them connected with life experiences. That is to say, when we are communicating through expressions, besides what you are seeing, there should be a thread in it. And that thread is the storytelling ability. So I use my own life experiences to share with the students about how an event can be developed into an image and try to leave an impression in their minds. So first we let them spend some time watching the paintings attentively. And then the students selected a picture he or she might be interested in, then drew it. The main purpose of this activity is for the students to deconstruct or represent the images in their minds or in their hearts. What he had seen and then shared the ideas with others through expressions about what they had seen and their reasons why. Once they finished sharing, we grouped together students who chose the same artwork and let them share with one another and compare what they had seen with what others saw. Then, through other people's thoughts and opinions, also the concept of organizing, they can quickly reconstruct how this group of people thought about the painting. The Berletti family. On the right-hand side of the painting is our male protagonist. He's a baron. On the left is the female protagonist. She is a maid. And she is carrying two little girls. There is a forbidden love affair between the baron and the maid. So actually, the two little girls are their children. And we notice that these two little girls each has a broken leg. But we don't know if this is an innate condition or from an accident. Then they worked together to reconstruct this again through drawing. So although we did drawings in this class, but unlike in the art classes, students were not expected to draw well or be true to life. The main purpose here is to understand their observation capability. Whether they can express the factual information or what they wanted to know. When all is done, I will let them use their bodies to reconstruct the artwork. When the image is presented, because human beings are three-dimensional, students can reconstruct the space through their bodies. Then we let the students observe one another. Just like going to a three-dimensional art gallery in which they could enter the artwork to see what is happening in this three-dimensional space. At the end, through such a three-dimensional space, students can develop storytelling skills. That is to say, he would be able to add the context for the artwork, what happened before and what might happen after this scene so they can develop the scenario from a single point, then slowly reconstruct the story through expressions. What impressed me the most is a painting about the inside of a carriage. Normally, I only look at the three people at the front of the carriage. But in this painting, I was able to see also the persons in the back. That made me think of more details, which brought changes to the meanings. It is kind of fun for me because before I thought art was distanced from people, something difficult to get close to. But this art and life class brings art to our lives and makes us realize that art is right next to us. Art is not really unapproachable. So it makes me want to try more.
to explore more about arts, and maybe we can try more expressions or more presentations in an artistic way. Performing arts open our eyes to see the world and the people around us. I think this is very important. So I'm not the only one in the world. I'm not so lonely, and as I would feel sad or lonely. So would many people. People all have different problems. The course opens up our empathy and caring heart. In their tenth grade. In the performing arts classes of the Arts and Life curriculum, I've taught them how to do improvisational creations with five to eight lines. So, as required by the plot and skills required for playwriting, I designed this unit. It started from some activities which are like games. To let students understand playwriting is actually not that hard. It can be developed from records of daily life, simple things from our lives. So, in the very first session, we let each student use graphic cards to create one line, and these lines are then connected to create a story. The second session is a continuation of the first session. As students have created a story, they can use the lines to practice. For them, this part is not really difficult because they have done similar practices when they were at grade ten. So they can develop from writing the dialogue to reflecting on the coherence and rationality between lines. After that, we move on to storyboarding. <laughs> For this, I used picture books. One is Cinderella, a well-known story. Another one is The Gardener. These picture books help students to visualize their ideas, and in the books, they also find some cues that serve as guides for them to write. So when they get the basic ideas, they can write it down about what's happening in this scene. They are able to write according to their own ideas. There is no standard answer. Of course, we would give them guidance about how to write. So step by step, I taught them how to write because they didn't think writing the dialogues were difficult for them. So they were able to develop coherence between scenes. Next, we move to the more advanced part to see how the story develops. I used artworks by Jimmy Liao for the graphics cards for them to make selections. In using the graphic cards to write the plot of the story, it's a kind of writing the outline of the plot. First, they needed to select pictures that inspired visualizations that created space for development. If the students go through this selecting process, the teacher will not be worried that the students have little to write about because they won't choose exactly the same card, as not everyone has the same feeling for the same picture. Some might like this picture; others might like another one. Just allow them to choose. In the previous session. When we had the first class, we have done a similar exploration in which the students use these pictures to reveal feelings through the cards they choose and describe their ideas. And the next step was for each of them to use one line to develop the story through improvisational creation. The postcard I got. There's a lake on it. It's nighttime. There was a boat, and there was a person on the boat. The person stretched out his body over the boat. Bending over to kiss a little animal, and at the tail of the boat, there's standing a bird. Yeah, that's the one. And then the teacher asked us to describe the card verbally. How I felt when I saw this picture, and what kind of story can I create with this card? Take the boat, floating on the lake of consciousness leisurely. The inner sky looks like the external one, illuminating in the dark. No one is there. The lonely consciousness is only accompanied by little animals, but that's all right. The sky is merged with the sea. The yellow river symbolizes the coming of sunlight. I kiss them goodbye. Continued to struggle in noises. So the part we did today was actually echoing what we have done previously. How the scenario of the whole plot can be developed from this card. So I also instructed them to use I, you, he, she, because the story can be told from different angles: your angle or my angle, or me telling another person's story. Some students were even willing to write about their own thoughts. Of course, for me as the teacher, here's a kind of hidden opportunity to do education. You know his message. You know his condition. So you can provide assistance to the student, maybe release the stress or something else.
In the following week, it is almost the time to get finished. We will use music, I will use classical music and well-known soundtracks, music from movies. So when the students hear the music, they will write down what comes to their minds. Just like the way they did with paintings in the previous week, write down the stories through music. Instead of paintings, write it down. So all the classes were compiled with a sequence. As students have learned things in the earlier classes, they have known how to write with a structure, how many parts the script can be divided into. So in the following week, when they finish these parts, to continue their learning, if they choose to be playwrights, they could keep writing the script and they could use their scripts for the final presentations. Such is the design for teaching playwriting. These graphic cards are embedded with great pictures and imagination. What kind of story might it contain? In what kind of mood? With what kind of context? Then, maybe, if there are characters, what kind of relationship will they have? And what kind of story will this lead into? I think it's very imaginative. He also said we could play a piece of music. Classical music, for example. Some music is very narrative such as Le Carnaval des Animaux, or pictures at an exhibition. There are a lot of stories in them, so when students hear that music, they can imagine the kind of story in it. Let students knit the threads. I think this is also very good. After they learned the basic skills to express themselves, the basic skills of using voice and body and expressing lines, then it comes to the time to think about how they will present their productions. In the end, what kind of ways can they use to give a more complete performance? The presentation of performance. Basically, in my classes, because we are situated in the Lujo district, and Lujo is actually a place full of stories, it's a major settlement for early immigrants from the central and southern parts of Taiwan. It's full of stories. So we just hope that our performances can combine with the local stories here, or combine with local contexts. There happens to be a very important temple right next to our school. It is an important religious center in Lujo area. It's Yonglian Temple. Inside Yonglian Temple, the construction is very interesting. In the front part of the temple, Guanyin is worshipped, while at the back part of the temple, Zhen Gong is worshipped. Why is it so? It's because Zhen Gong helped the residents of Lujo. So we took this story as the main axis of our text and presentation. Today, if I just told my students this story in the classes, they actually wouldn't feel anything. So I wanted them to discover or explore the story by themselves. For example, in Yonglian Temple, what does the statue of Zhen Cheng Gong look like? In Yonglian Temple, there are even carvings of stories like this on the walls. Actually, there were two most important purposes for us to take the students to Yonglian Temple. One was to explain the history of Zhen Cheng Gong his story with Lujo. Secondly, to let them see the space of Yonglian Temple. The method of performance was in the form of storytelling theater. The storytelling theater has a very important approach. That is, it doesn't use any real props, and the so-called props are presented through the students' body movements. So when they're there in the temple, I would give them tasks and assignments. They had to take 10 photos related to Yonglian Temple. For example, its sculptures or the outlines of its buildings, the space or images they found interesting, etc. Then, when they came back with the photos in the class, I asked them to pick three out of the ten photos and use their bodies to form the shape of that photo. Later, these still images will be used in our story of Zhen Chen Gong. A lot of people, because actually Yonglian Temple has some fixed images, for example, there are two very large statues of the heaven gods at the entrance of Yonglian Temple, and many groups of students would choose to present such images, or Guanyin, there is a Guanyin statue as well, and many groups would choose such an image. But for example, some students would choose to present the images from very different angles. They might present the living room of the executive committee of the temple, so they would present the image of this living room. Of course, this is just one of their creative ideas. Can it actually be used in the presentation? Not necessarily so. But I think the students' perspectives are very unique. When they find things in a space, they can see it from many different angles in the space. For example, a group of students took the picture of mops hanging on the wall and then presented the images of the mops. It's very interesting. It's a very interesting perspective. 
and they chose this one from 10 photos to represent the image in the ways they chose to do. This is actually the student's vision and creativity. What do you want to say to the world? To the crowd, to the people around you, what do you want to say? What do you want to express? Why do you use this form? You choose to express yourself in this form. You chose form A. You chose singing. And you didn't choose novel writing. You have to think about the choice of forms. And then finally, when you choose the medium or form of expression, you will face the problem of how I can make good use of the medium. Or how to give full play to the possibilities of the medium you chose, to the extent you know and what you are capable of. To maximize the possibilities of that medium and that form. Because, of course, this goes with the assumption that you have passion for this form, so you continue to study the skills, some professionalism behind it. So that, of course, you'll be better able to master it. And of course, there will be more professional approaches you can use. But I think in the early stages, at least we need to master some of the features of that form first. Then you can make good use of it and expand its possibilities. And finally, we can reflect that if through this way you have expressed something, are you just talking to yourself? Or do you want to have some connections with social issues and some public areas? That is to say, does your work have a kind of involvement? An involvement with the society. I think this is from the view of the creating process, some advice I gave to my students. What teacher Fang Ting has done is a kind of drama that combines with the surrounding fields, the field of life. At the same time, this kind of drama is about seeing art as a form of social engagement and practice. In fact, since the 1990s, it also became a mainstream of art. There are many theater professionals or visual art professionals or music artists who have all dived in. They all see art as a form of social engagement, a social practice to establish people-to-people -people interactions and understanding, and as a kind of medium to help one another. There are so many issues in the society we live in, so we have to care to care for the family, to care for the country, the whole world and everything around us. In my ears are the sounds of wind, rain, and reading. I think that performing arts provide us with the roots of what, why, and how. Both the root and the door. So when we open the door with this key, we can explore it on our own. So this is a very valuable key. I hope the students can seize the opportunity to open the door of your heart and use the key to open the door to understanding the world. When we open up the body and the voice of the students and develop their abilities to observe and imagine the stories and the environment, we can also refer to many good playwrights here and abroad, refer to the works they created. So, for example, I can think of something closer to the lives of our students, such as one of the great playwrights and directors in Taiwan, Mr. Lee Kuo Xiu. His works, Not Only You and Me series, they are all presentations of issues that were very relevant to Taiwan society at that time, and they are all in the form of comedies, very relaxing. Teachers can choose some episodes from the work. After explaining the outline of the whole story to the students, divide the students into different groups to perform different sections of the play. Or it's also fine to perform the entire play. Through these more specific works of Taiwan's outstanding playwrights, we let the students practice. Actually, learning through this kind of creative works from outstanding playwrights and representations of these works is also an approach for learning performance creation. Like Stan Lai's work, Mumble Jumble, Teacher Jin Shi Jie's A Kid's Play, and about Taiwan's history and culture. There's Teacher Wang Chi Mei's The Orphan of the World series. Then, if you are interested in community theaters, I also recommend a book I wrote called Performing Asia Through the Community Theater Performances Across Asia. Young people like Tsai Po Chang very much. The young playwright's works, such as Mulan the Musical, or some of his modern scripts, I highly recommend. If you want to stage drama in Taiwanese language, I would recommend works from our teacher, Xu Rei Fang's work, Take Me to See the Fish.
and The Phoenix Trees Are in Blossom. They are all scripts for performances in Taiwanese language. Also, I would also recommend some non-realist writers in Taiwan, such as Mr. Ma San and Mr. Yao Yi Wei and Mr. Tian Qi Yuan. Their non-realistic works are wonderful, like Ma San's work, Flower and Sword, Teacher Yao Yi Wei's From Phoenix Town, and The Emerald Bodhisattvas are all very good. Some historical stories with symbolic approaches, such as Tian Qi Yuan's Love Homosexuals in Chinese and Socialism in the Capitalized Nude, are more subversive and very avant-garde plays. Then there are also some non-realistic works from abroad, such as Matterlink's The Blind or Strindberg's A Dream Play. There are many characters which are not much like characters in real life. So it's very imaginative, sort of like myths, fairy tales, and fantasy stories. And about works in realism, I highly recommend Tennessee Williams, whom I like very much. His plays are all very warm. He depicts a story of a small town in the southern USA, a playwright's story with his mother and his sister, The Glass Menagerie, and Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. These are all very moving works. And Death of a Salesman by Arthur Miller. This might be the most classic contemporary work. Other works, such as works by Ibsen and Chekhov, like Ibsen's Ghosts. It's about the gaps between two generations, and sometimes the adult's hypocrisy might hinder young people's development. And there's Chekhov, my favorite Russian writer. His works, Three Sisters and The Cherry Orchard, are very realistic stories. The stories happened in Moscow, but even if they took place in our time, we would also feel very close to these stories. Thank you.